Thanks for the I mean, invitation. I'm going to talk on this you know, fixed law, equilibrium distribution, and inhomogeneous space. So these things are related. As I will be showing you uh, some uh, three, four slides, you would uh, uh, get to see. By inhomogeneous space, I mean that uh, basically what I'm considering here is a Brownian motion. By inhomogeneous space, I mean that the diffusivity of the Brownian particle and its damping, those are coordinate dependent. So what are the theories? Now, when the diffusivity of a Brownian particle and its uh, damping is coordinate dependent, we see here that the space is inhomogeneous, not because of only the presence of, uh, uh, you know, the conservative force. There are other agents, namely this diffusivity and damping. Now, the, there are many theories. I mean, what what is what is accepted is that in the end the kind of probability distribution that the Brownian particle will be having would be a Boltzmann distribution. And as you basically run a Langevin dynamics, what you want to do there is that you want to access equilibrium fluctuations after the initial transient is over. And if you know the equilibrium distribution is going to be a Boltzmann distribution, and Langevin dynamics is in the end going to you know, give you access to those equilibrium fluctuations. Now you take as many paths as possible and that's exactly what people have done. So that is where there are many theories, but everybody comes you know, in the end to this equilibrium probability distribution to be the Boltzmann distribution. And that is where the agreement is. So this, this is the Langevin dynamics that I have written down here following this paper by Lau and Lubensky. So, you know, this is basically the conservative force term. This gamma is inverse damping, and this, this is the strength of the uh, stochastic noise, which is basically a function of uh, space. And on top of these things, you need an extra term here on the right-hand side. And that basically gets determined as you look, you know, uh, into the uh, corresponding Fokker Planck. And the Fokker Planck that Lau and Lubinsky that they have arrived at, you know, corresponding to this Langevin dynamics is this. This Fokker Planck equation basically gives you this distribution where this extra term comes out to be this, where this constant alpha, this constant is actually zero when the, you, you follow a Ito convention. Alpha is half if you follow standard Stratonovich convention. Alpha can be anything for a generalized Stratonovich convention according to Lau and Lubinsky. And you keep this term here because, you know, the noise integral that basically generates some kind of a spurious current, which is not real. And that spurious current has to be canceled out. And this, the presence of this term here in the Langevin dynamics basically cancels that out. So that is where this term is. Now, different theories I told you, they, they are existing, which basically differ here. They take many different paths, like, you know, if you, if you think of the, the standard ETO, as shown in the textbook of Riskin, you would see that in the standard ETO convention, there is no spurious current term. But here, you know, when you set this alpha equal to zero, you get a GEG prime. Whereas this GEG prime, in the standard Stratonovich, as Riskin shows, I mean, that, that, that term is G, G prime here. This is half G, G prime, okay? And these things are different, depending upon whether, uh, you know, uh, Lubinsky's theory it is, or uh, Peter Hange's theory it is, or, you know, uh, some other group's uh, theory. So that, that liberty is there. Moment you consider that, the end result ha has to be Boltzmann distribution, because in the end, whoever is running this thing, the Langevin dynamics is going to get uh, equilibrium fluctuations as uh, Boltzmann fluctuations. So then it, it, it does not matter, and that, that is where you know this thing is. Now let us look at the standard Kramer's Moyal expansion. The kind of dynamics that Kramer's Moyal expansion gives you is this, where there are infinitely you know many terms <clears throat> on the right hand side. Now Paula's theorem basically tells us that. You know, if, if we want to keep the, um, keep the transition probability positive, there on the right-hand side, we must take either a single term 
or two terms or infinitely many terms. We cannot take three, five, you know, some other things. So that is where basically here, you know, <clears throat> the Fokker Planck equation that you normally get from this, this thing that basically uh, contains two terms. The first one is the drift one, the second one is the diffusion one, and these are the moments. These dNs are different moments, and when you actually evaluate these moments using those uh, uh, stochastic integrals, there comes that spurious, uh, uh, you know, uh, current problem. And on Etho, it shows up. Sorry, on Etho, it does not show up. In Stratonovich, it shows up. You know, when you basically calculate the first moment, when you calculate the second moment, that basically corresponds to the diffusivity, this d. I mean, there is no problem. In Etho, in Stratonovich, it's the same. So the thing to notice here is that the diffusion current by the standard theory that comes out, that is like this. Okay, this is a, you know, first derivative of dx px, whereas the diffusion current that I had in, the, in this theory, one of those many theories, is this. So this is the standard Fickian diffusion current that everywhere in all these theories is considered. Okay, where d, although its, it's, it's uh, diffusivity is coordinate dependent, it sits outside of this derivative. And what Kramer's moyle theory tells you is that the diffusion, uh, you know, the diffusivity is this, the d should go inside. Now d sitting outside gives you Boltzmann distribution. d sitting inside does not give you Boltzmann distribution. Okay, so let us just try to have a look at what this, what this diffusion current is when the diffusivity is coordinate dependent in a, you know, in a very simple way. So that basically is the crux of this talk. So the diffusivity by definition is this thing. Now here, <clears throat> this average is an equilibrium ensemble average. You take time you know, going to infinity and that makes this diffusivity a global quantity. Now we are after a diffusivity which is local. So the first thing for that is to just drop this thing, drop this limit, okay, to make the diffusivity local. And as you drop this limit, this t, this t would be basically determined by the locality over which, the length scale over which you are trying to find out this diffusivity, okay? Now notice one thing that by, by uh, you know, uh, I mean, it, diffusivity is nothing but average velocity times length, dimensionally, okay? If that is the case, now take this situation where over this delta x length, I'm considering this diffusivity and the density to be these, over, over here at x plus delta x, over this length, delta x, these are these. And I'm considering that there is a variation in diffusivity and rho over this length scale delta x, not below that. So these things are homogeneous here, homogeneous here, as you go over that length scale, then you, you know you have a variation in diffusivity and rho. So I'm interested in finding, finding out what is the current here. So the forward current here is this, diffusivity divided by the length scale gives you the velocity. There is an extra half factor that goes, you know, that basically takes care of this rho over two. You should consider this being homogeneous, left-right symmetry is there. So this is the current here because of the left part. And this is the current because of the right part here. So the difference is basically this. And, you know, as you take the local limit, delta x goes to zero, the current becomes this. So this is exactly the one that you get in the standard kramer small, you know, expansion. So if that is that, if, the diff if we know the diffusion current density properly, then writing down Fok the Fokker-Planck equation, you know, is just, you know, considering two terms, the drift term and the diffusion term. Drift term is the force by this damping constant, and this is the diffusion term now I know. So this basically is the conservation equation for the probability. The probability distribution that you get is this, not the Boltzmann, standard Boltzmann distribution, okay? So it has an extra dx here, an extra coordinate dependence, and it has to be there because the homogeneity of space is broken not only by the conservative force, its corresponding potential, it's broken by uh, the diffusivity and the damping as well, which are coordinate dependent, connected by fluctuation, dissipation relation, whatever, so one of them shows up here. Okay, so if I want to write this thing in, in terms of, you know, in the form of the Boltzmann distribution, the effective potential comes out to be this. 
Okay, as the effective potential comes out to be this, this is the standard part. The moment you identify this to be the KT, this is the extra part. And now, knowing the distribution and knowing the effective potential, one can just write down a Langevin dynamics, which is an additive noise dynamics. Just use that potential and use a unit strength, you know, additive noise. That would basically make you uh, equilibrate, you know, at the minimum of the potential at a large time. You'd be sampling, you know, the same equilibrium, um, um, equilibrium uh, fluctuations. So that's the purpose of doing, you know, Langevin dynamics uh, after all. Okay. So let me conclude. So if there is an inhomogeneity due to diffusivity and damping, the distribution has to be modified from Boltzmann distribution. It would be a modified Boltzmann distribution where there will be an extra you know, uh, agent coming into the distribution which would capture the inhomogeneity of space due to the diffusivity and damping. So that's the conclusion. Thank you. Since. Yes. Question of where the D of X sits, inside or outside, be settled by your trying to derive that Langevin equation. For instance, following Fort Carson Mazur or Swansig model, in which you have a Brownian particle coupled to a bunch of harmonic oscillators. But here, I think the coupling constant, unlike the Swansig model, would be actually inhomogeneous, position dependent on where the particle is. And then one may try to see what, what Langevin equation comes out from first principles by integrating out the oscillator degrees of freedom. Okay, first of all, I have not shown here, I have not considered Langevin dynamics in my case, right? I, I just considered, you know, this uh, Fokker Planck. And there would exist. Uh, well, know, from that Langevin equation, one by either Ito or Stratonovich would could derive their star Fokker plan. Okay, what I have shown you here, I did not go from the uh, Langevin to the Fokker plan. Okay, I just found out what should be the diffusion current. I know what's the drift current. Then I know the Fokker plan. I mean. Langeva and Fokker Planck, they, they are all on the equal footing. I mean, you cannot say that this one is, uh, you know, more fundamental and I have to move from here to there. Okay. Now, f finding out the corresponding Langeva by integrating out, you know, uh, both degrees of freedom, that can definitely be tried. And I had done that, you know, and found out a different Langeva uh, dynamics. Uh, I'll uh, let you know, you know, the paper where it's published. And that's a different uh, Langevin dynamics uh, than what normally one does using this um, Zwanzig's, uh, you know, uh, method of integrating out harmonic oscillator particles. I'll, I'll, I'll show you. Yes. So let's thank the speaker again. And